Next, we're going to look at a couple of really interesting um, features of natural numbers uh, when we compare them. So if we've got two or more natural numbers together, we can find what we call the greatest common divisor and the least common multiple. Now, some of you may have heard this called the greatest common factor before, so the divisor means the same thing. Um, essentially, if you have two natural numbers or more, you get three or four, whatever, um, the GCD is the largest number that's a divisor of both. Okay, so for instance, um, if you had the numbers uh, 8 and 10, for instance, the largest uh, number that's a divisor of each is GCD um, of 8 and 10. Well, the GCD of 8 and 10 is simply, if you look at all the divisors of 8, you have 1, 2, 4, and 8. And if you look at all the divisors of 10, you have 1, 2, 5, and 10. Of this list, which ones are common? Well, the 1 is common and the 2 is common. And out of those two common divisors, right, we want the greatest one, which in this case would be 2. Okay, now that one's kind of a basic example. They get a lot harder if the numbers are bigger or have more factors okay, or divisors. Um, now the least common multiple is the smallest number that's divisible by both. Okay, in other words, both 8 and 10 would have to be divisors of something larger. So the least common multiple, LCM, uh, oops, and we'll go with the 8 and the 10 here again just for a moment, of 8 and 10. Well, you look at, again, um, numbers that are divisible by 8 and 10. Well, if you think about numbers that are divisible by each one, um, so like for 8, obviously 8, you start with 8, and then you keep going in uh, multiple things. 16, 24, uh, 32, um, 40, 48, 56, 64, is that right? Yeah, 72, 80, and so on, right? And then multiples of 10 are, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and so on. And if you look at all of their common multiples, well, you have, let's see, you get you got 40 on the list, you got 80 on the list, right? And so here, but look at, um, these lists keep going, and the common multiples are going to be everything that's a multiple of 40, right? 120 will be on the list, uh, 160 will be common, and what you'll find is that the le but there won't be an end. Right? The common multiples, the ones that are circled, will just keep going as well. But what's interesting is there is a smallest one. So it may not be the biggest one, but there's the smallest, the least common multiple, which is 40 in this case. Okay. Okay. Now those are cool. Um, and it's neat to, to look at um, look at these kind of they're drawn out, you know, where you kind of really analyze all the details and, and try to group things together here. But this is impractical. This method of calculating is impractical when the numbers get large or if the numbers have lots of factors. Okay, so there are some cool shortcuts. Um, and I'll show you two of them. Uh, one of them occurs in your book. One of them is just a fun one that I like. Um, the shortcuts for finding the greatest common divisor, and I'll just continue with the uh, 8 and the 10 there for a moment, is that you list off the prime factorization of each one. So you do 8 is, of course, 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2, so you have 2 to the third power. Um, 10 is of course 2 times 5 and that's it. So it's prime factorization is 2 times 5. Uh, and of course the greatest common factor is just any factor that they share in common, right? Uh, or the, the product of all. In fact, if I were to just to write this, maybe not in exponent form, but as a repeated multiplication, it's all the factors that they have 
um, in common multiplied together. Well, here they have a two in common, but that's it, right? These other twos aren't shared over here. This five isn't shared over here. And so that two is a GCF, okay? Um, basically, you select every prime factor. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, you take each prime factor that's common raised to the smallest power. Okay. Um, yeah. So here, 2 is common, and it's raised to the 1 power is the smallest power, right? This was 2 to the 3rd. This was 2 to the 1. You take the one that's smallest. Okay. So you... Uh, so it would be the product of common prime factors to the smallest power, right? So instead of two to the third, we choose the two to the one because that's the smaller power. That's the one that'll be common. The other ones will be extra, okay? Um, the least common multiple can be found, again, using the same uh, tree diagram, the same uh, prime factorization, but then we're going to include every factor, not just the common ones, but every factor raised to the largest power, okay? So we have a five and we have a two to the third. Those are the factors that we're looking for, okay? So it's, one way to think of it is you include anything that's shared, you include once in the LCM, right? So there's my two that was circled. Then you've got two more twos and a five, right? Two times two is four, times two is eight, times five is four, all right? Again, this is two to the third times five to the one. So instead of just the common prime factors to the smallest power, it's all the prime factors to the largest powers. Okay, so it's the product of all prime factors to the largest powers, okay? Now, if I take another uh, approach to this, something I think is kind of neat, you can do this some, with a technique that I like to call the division ladder. I don't know who coined that term or where it comes from. But uh, using a division ladder, instead of using the factor tree notation. And the division ladder is this. You take 8 and 10, put them in a division like you would do long division, right? And on the outside of the division, you choose any factor. It doesn't matter if it's prime or composite, small, big, doesn't matter. Any factor that's common. You just have to find one. Well, right away I see that they're both even. So two works, right? Two divides both of them evenly. Then do the division. Two goes into eight four times. Don't worry about the remainder stuff. Two goes into 10, because there won't be a remainder, right? Two goes into 10 five times. Now, here, four and five are what we call relatively prime. They, uh, they don't share any common factors except for one. If they shared another common factor, you would repeat the process. If they both shared a three, for instance, you pull the three out or divide them by three and then get the final result, you know, up above. Uh, which I'll show in another example. What ends up happening is that the greatest common factor is the number on the outside, or if this ladder continues, it'd be the product of all the numbers on the outside. The least common multiple is always found by multiplying diagonals. In other words, the four times the 10 gives you 40. In addition to that, the five times the eight also gives you 40, okay? So just, you know, you, there's multiple ways to find the LCM from that division ladder. Um, I could try this with more complicated examples. I'll give you one more example here. Uh, 
let's try it with, let's try to find the greatest common divisor and the least common multiple for, um, oh, 72 and, um, 120, for instance. Okay, there's a couple bigger numbers. And we'll do the LCM as well. Well, the division tree, we'll do the division trees first, then we'll do the division ladder and show you, you know, you can choose which one you do. Um, but the GCD, so 72, we'll break this down. I know 72 is 8 times 9, 8 is 2 times 4, 4 is 2 times 2, 9 is 3 times 3. So I have 2 to the 3rd times 3 squared, okay? 120 is well, 12 times 10. Just I'm just thinking of things that come up, uh, you know, first, first things that come to mind. But remember, the prime factorization will be unique, so it won't matter the order or the combination I use to start off. This would be uh, 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times three, uh, 5. No, 3. Gosh, what? I don't know. 3. 10 is 2 times 5. And so that gives me three twos, so that's two to the third, a three, and a five, okay? And so the greatest common divisor, GCD, is going to be the product, remember it's the product of the common factors to the lowest degree, lowest uh, degree, lowest power. Uh, um, so we have, uh, let's see, two is common, both to the third power, so that's the lowest. And three is common, but the one power over here is smaller than the two power. And then there's no other common factors, right? The five is in one, but not the other. Two to the third is eight times three, 24. So 24 is the greatest common divisor to those two numbers. Now let's look at the LCM. Remember the LCM is all of the factors raised to their highest power. So if I look at the list here, 2 is raised to 3 or 3. Well, 3 is the highest then. It's kind of a tie, right? So this is equal to 2 to the 3rd times. I got 3 to the 2 and 3 to the 1. The higher power is 2. And then I've got a 5 in there as well. Okay? And when I multiply all this out, 2 to the 3rd is 8. 3 squared is 9 times 5. Um, well, I know 8 times 5 is 40, 4 times 9 is 36, or so 360. Right? 40 times 9 would be 360. So the least common multiple should be 360 using that um, algorithm. Now, let's try, for instance, the um, ladder, the division ladder. Let's see what happens. If I go 72 and 120, Let's say I know right away they're both even, so I can throw uh, pull a two out of each one, right? Divide both by two, you get 20, uh, 36 and 60. I notice that six will divide both of those. Two also does, three also does, but I like six here, so I'm gonna try six. Again, it doesn't have to be prime, just any common factor. Six goes into 36 six times and 60 10 times. 6 and 10 are both even. I could pull another 2 out or divide them both by 2. 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 10 5 times. 3 and 5 are what we call relatively prime. The only common factor they have or common divisor is 1. Uh, so we don't have to go any further. And so now I just sit here and I, I identify uh, the GCD, uh, GCD, which is, again, all of the common factors multiplied together. And again, it won't matter what order you pulled them out or what values you pulled out, as long as they were common. Um, two times six is 12 times two is 24, right? So you get two times six times two, which will still be 24, that's for the GCD. And if you do the LCM, well, I don't have to worry about all these exponents and multiplying everything out, which is cool, it's fine, but I like this one. Again, if you multiply the product on the corners, the diagonal, you get the 
360, right? It's 3 times 120 is again our 360, right? You could do 5 times 72. If you do that multiplication, you're still going to get 360. Um, another little trick, if you were so inclined, you could do 2 times 6 times 2 times 3 times 5. Everything on the outside of the ladder will also give you 360. It's a third uh, way to calculate that, but I kind of like the, the diagonals because there's only one uh, multiplication you have to do there. Uh, so again, this is a cool technique because it really builds into the structure both the GCD and the LCM uh, very quickly. Uh, this is a cool idea too. It gives more into the number theory and the divisor idea that we've been talking about. Um, and you don't really need to know in advance any of the common factors, which could also be uh, a bit of a nuisance if, you, if these numbers were a bit weirder. You know, these are obviously evens, but um, you know, if one was even, one was odd, maybe it'd be harder to find a grade or any common factor and so it might be easier to work through that using the division uh, trees and factor trees instead.